Hi, I'm Karen, and this is The Learning Circuit, where we learn about electronic basics. Today, I'm going to talk about wire and wire tools. When getting started with electronics, there are a lot of different hand tools you'll need, and probably even more you'll want. Today, I'm going to go over the different types of these tools so that you can choose what will work best for you and hopefully not waste any money. Let's start with wire, the arteries through which electricity flows. Wire comes in two types, stranded and solid. Stranded wire is used when flexibility is needed or when the wire is going to be subjected to repetitive motion, like in a robotic arm. Solid wire is typically less expensive and it'll hold its shape better. That's why I used it in my cardboard circuits. However, it can break after repetitive bends. Oh man, it's broken. Electrical wire typically has an insulative cover that has to be removed to access the conductive metal inside. Insulative means that electricity cannot flow through easily, like with rubber or plastics. Conductive means that electricity can flow through, like with metals. The insulative coating on these wires helps prevent shorts in any circuit. When electricity flows through a wire, it can cause the wire to heat up. Thicker wires handle the heat better than thinner wires. Thinner wires can even burn up if too much electricity flows through them. I'm going to show you an example. The fibers on this steel wool are thin, like on thinly gauged wire. If I put the flame to them, they'll burn up. Another analogy often used when talking about electricity is water flowing through a pipe. If the pipe is too small and too much pressure builds up, the pipe bursts. When thinly gauged wire burns up, it is because too much electrical current is trying to flow through the wire. The pipe bursts. This is why wire comes in different sizes. Now, if you're from a country that uses the metric system, it's much easier because all you need to know is the diameter of the wire in millimeters. In the US, we use AWG, the American Wire Gauge, and that can get a bit confusing. With gauges, the larger the number, the smaller the diameter of the wire. The larger the wire, the smaller the number is in gauge. To work with wire, you'll need some tools. Here are some examples of different types of needle nose pliers. For doing electronics work, small and narrow pliers work best. They allow you to get into tight spots in circuits and they make it easier to manipulate parts and wire. Some are smooth on the inside and some have teeth. If you have a heavier duty task, like bending thick wire, these are better. They grip better and they give you better leverage. <laughs> okay, that was pretty easy. If using very small components, such as surface mount components, you may decide to use tweezers for a more precise grip. However, you may find that using needle nose pliers will give you a stronger and more secure grip on those same parts. The heavy duty needle nose pliers also come with a built in wire cutter. That can be pretty handy. Wire cutters are also referred to as snips, side angle cutters, or flush cutters. These are flush cutters. The blades come together in a manner where they cut flush. Get it? The rest of these are side angle cutters. You can see that the blades do not come together at the face of the cutter. For electronics, again, smaller tends to be better. Large pairs give you more leverage, making it easier to cut thick wire. Smaller pairs allow you to get in closer to your circuit, making it easier to trim off the little bits. These are the simplest and least expensive. You can usually find these for as little as $2, which is nice if you need to get a lot of them, like for a classroom. They can also function as both wire cutters and wire strippers. However, there are a lot of drawbacks to these. One, there's no set gauge guide here, so you have to adjust this screw and nut every time you wanna change gauges, and it's a bit of trial and error to actually get the correct gauge size. Also, if you don't tighten this enough, it can slip. Or if you set it too small, you can accidentally cut through too much of your wire, or sometimes even your entire wire, and that can be really frustrating. This type can also be found fairly inexpensively, but the wire strippers are on the handle, which is not great ergonomically. Now these are meant as a multi-tool where you can cut the wire, crimp connectors, cut bolts, but as wire strippers, they don't work very well, so I don't really recommend them. We talked about how wire comes in different gauges, so do these types of wire strippers. Make sure you get a pair that has the size of gauges that you're gonna to need to be stripping. 
This is the last type of wire stripper. They work by pinching the insulation and pulling it off of the metal wire inside. This one works really well on ends, but I've found that sometimes it accidentally cuts some of the strands off. Obviously not desirable. This one tends to be a little bit more expensive, but it's really nice because you don't have to hold onto the wire tightly. It does all of the gripping for you. The last thing I'm going to talk about are breadboards. When first building your circuit, it's best to start by connecting your components on a breadboard. Here's how it works. On the side, there are two columns that are each connected. The negative blue column is all connected, and the red positive column is all connected. These are intended to be used for power and ground. In the center, there are rows, most often with five holes, where all five holes in each row are connected. This smaller breadboard is simpler and lacks the power columns. Breadboards come in different sizes, but they all pretty much function the same. Get a size that works for your project. Those are the basic tools to get you started making circuits. If you have any questions about electronics tools or tips you'd like to share, post those on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. I'll see you next time and thanks for watching.